Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this quick video I'm going to check the Hummingbird V3, the latest 65mm swoop by Newbie Drone. This is actually the second product that I reviewed by Newbie Drone, as a few months ago I reviewed the Acrobee 65 BLV4 LRS, a pretty powerful whoop which I really like. First of all, in terms of packaging, the Hummingbird V3 came inside this small box along with an extra set of Newbie Drone AZ 31mm tri blade propellers. I'm not 100% sure what is included with the official product as this is a review unit that was sent to me before the product was released, but I'm pretty sure that this is what you're going to get. Anyway, I recommend to get at least a couple of extra sets of propellers and even though the frame is covered by an unlimited warranty, an extra set of frame and canopy is suggested in my opinion. In addition, you should also make sure that you have compatible batteries such as these ones by Newbie Drone and of course a battery charger. In terms of features and specs, the Hummingbird V3 features the Hummingbird 0802 25,000 kV motors, an all-in-one F4 flight controller that features two free UART ports, four pretty strong LEDs on its sides, a built-in 25mW 5.8GHz video transmitter, and an integrated 12A BLLES 4-in-1 ESC that comes pre-flashed with Jazz Maverick firmware. This is the Express LRS version, so this flight controller also features a built-in 2.4 GHz Express LRS SPI RX. In addition, the drone is using a PH2.2 plug with solid gold-plated pins. It features the Cockroach 65mm frame, which as I've mentioned earlier, is covered by an unlimited warranty. And finally, it features the BI lightweight analog camera. Now, in terms of weight, without a battery, the Hummingbird V3 weighs 21.9 grams, including this 1S LHV 300mAh battery by Newbie Drone, it weighs 30 grams, and in comparison, the Acrobee BLV4 weighs 23.7 grams, so it's 1.8 grams heavier than the Hummingbird V3. Now, unlike the weight difference, in terms of pricing, there is a big difference between these two whoops, as the Acrobee 65 BLV4 is priced at $160 and the Hummingbird V3 is $70 cheaper. So for $90 you get a pretty good whoop and I'm not sure that you'll be able to find something that beats it in this price category. As for setting it up, here you can see a quick overview of the Betaflight settings that the Hummingbird V3 was shipped with. Most important, it comes pre-tuned out of the box and all you need to do is pretty much to bind the radio receiver with your radio controller and configure your favorite flight modes and OSD elements. As for binding the Express LRS SPI RX, the easiest option is to head over to the UID byte generator which is linked down below, enter your bind phrase and then you can either copy this value and paste it in the CLI or head over to the radio receiver tab on Betaflight paste it and save the settings. You should note that since this is an SPI ready receiver, its firmware is updated through the firmware update of the flight controller and while it is not ideal that you can't simply flash the ready receiver firmware using the firmware which is provided by the Express LRS devs, Newbie Drone has a dedicated team which is in charge of updating the firmware of the Express LRS radio receiver along with the firmware of the flight controller. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Hummingbird V3. Overall, after testing it out, I can tell you that it's a pretty nice little agile 65mm swoop. In terms of flight time, you can expect between 2 to 3 minutes depending on how you push the throttle. If you're going to get very aggressive, you can expect closer to 2 minutes, maybe even a minute and a half. And if you're just going to cruise around, you can expect up to 3 minutes. The drone itself is pretty aggressive, so I'm not sure if it is suitable for beginners unless you're going to change the default PID tune and rates, so it is going to be suitable for someone who 
is familiar with the basic of flying whoops and wants to advance to something faster. In terms of durability, I crashed the drone quite a few times. The only thing that got damaged is the canopy, so I do recommend to get an extra canopy, maybe even two. The frame is not going to break easily, and anyway, it is covered by the unlimited warranty. In terms of picture quality, I think that considering the price of the drone, the image quality is decent, but definitely not amazing. And you should note that you won't be able to fly the drone at nighttime since the camera can't handle well low light. The LEDs, however, do really look cool at nighttime and they are very useful in case you are going to race this whooping doors. As for the VTX, since it is limited to 25 milliwatts, you won't be able to get too far, but for indoor racing, I don't think that it's going to be an issue. So overall, for $90, I think that you are getting a pretty good run for your money, and this is going to be a good option for somebody who bought, for example, the Beta FPV starter kit, so they already have a set of basic FPV goggles and an Express LRS radio transmitter, and they want to advance to something faster that they can practice whoop racing with. Anyway, now I'm going to wrap up this quick video with some flight footage. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. I wish you all happy flying and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.